What do you feel is the purpose of us as human beings? I think that's a very good question. I think as an atheist, I think that people who believe in any gods have jumped to a premature conclusion based on very limited evidence. Now the evidence that we have today has shown that we all have common ancestry based on the facts that evolution is true. You know? How do people jump to a conclusion? What is the conclusion they make about God? What is the concept of God? That Say like 3,000 years ago, one of the first monotheistic gods was Yahweh, invented by the ancient Hebrew Israelites. And then they took that concept forward to Christians. And then Christians took that concept forward to Islam. And the ancient Israelites got their concepts from the ancient Babylonian and Ethiopian gods and Egyptian gods. So that's what the history, history shows, that people try to jump to conclusions about where we came from. That's a good scientific question. Science now looks at the evidence, analyzes it, tests it, builds instruments like microscopes, telescopes, and finds out what the actual truth is, gives it to people who won't accept it because they've been indoctrinated into their beliefs. In order to say that it's misconstrued, what, what is the concept of God? I, just, I define God concept as something that, God is a concept in your brain. Yeah? Human beings made up this concept in their brain because they didn't understand certain natural forces around the world, earthquakes, lightning, and things like that, which they didn't understand how these things could happen, the wind, and stuff like that. So they made up this concept of a God which is more powerful than their leaders at the time, because therefore they're, they're doing things which the leaders couldn't stop. So therefore the concept of God started thousands of years ago from misunderstanding the earth that we live on. So to you, the concept of God is an explanation of what things that we don't understand? Yeah, that's right. If you make up a God, and you try to make the God in your image, he has to have certain anthropomorphic qualities, like anger, hatred, jealousy, he wants to be worshipped, and if you follow the wrong God, then obviously those people are following the wrong God, and not giving him the respect that he wants, so he commands his people to go and kill them. Like in the Bible, you had the people were commanded to kill all the Amalekites by God, kill all the Canaanites, you know. These stories incited genocide by the leaders who wanted to control the people. That is why religion, in my, in my view, is very divisive, you know. People need to start thinking for themselves and start realizing that the gods that they believe in are not true. We as human beings could come together and live together as one and work out how to live together in peace and harmony without looking to a sky daddy up in the sky who's going to reward us or punish us depending on what, we, what beliefs you're following. So in answer to all of that, why is your answer atheism basically? You see religions as very, I see religions as very divisive. You've got Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, all believing that they're in conversation with the creator of this universe. Anyone who doesn't share their beliefs are going to burn in hell, for instance. So if you're a Muslim, you think Christians are burning in hell and Jews are burning in hell. If you're a Jew, you think, you think Muslims are burning in hell, you know? But you think that the creator of this whole universe and galaxies and solar systems has got a place set aside for punishing people because they happen to be born into a different belief system. If you were born as a Muslim, in a Muslim house, you didn't choose to be born a Muslim. If you were born as a Christian, you didn't choose to be born a Christian. If you were a Jew, you didn't choose to be born Jew. But you just believe that you happen to be born into the right belief, just out of chance. And everyone else is going to burn in hell. You could argue that heaven and hell are concepts, not actual places. So what do you say to that? That's my point exactly. Heaven and hell are concepts to instill fear into people, to not think. If you start thinking about it and start leaving your religion, then that would make the religion die. For instance, if you're a Muslim, they have a penalty of apostasy. If you're a Muslim and you leave Islam, the punishment for apostasy is death. And 13 countries in this world carry that apostasy penalty for people who leave Islam. Even if you just criticize Islam, there's three bloggers this year, 2015, who was hacked to death and beaten to death in Bangladesh. You know? In Saudi Arabia, you can't even criticize Islam, you can't even build a church. You can't even say, I don't think that this belief is true. Even if you don't, because if you do say that, you're on a serious risk of being like, you know, 
seen as a heretic or an apostate and beaten or stoned to death or even beheaded. Christianity has moved on from that. Christianity tries to keep people in the faith by having the fear of hell still you know, and the reward of heaven and the fact that they say that Jesus Christ redeemed himself, was killed as a human sacrifice for our sins. And that in itself is an immoral concept, you know. But for some people, that holds them in it. For us, we say, free your mind. Think for yourself. A religion that enslaved black people and took them out of Africa on the first slave ship called the Good Ship Jesus. Why are you following that religion? Why are you following this God that doesn't exist? We are adults, we can think. From the age of three years old, I know the difference between right and wrong. You do as well. You don't need a God to tell you it's wrong to kill people, it's wrong to rape people, it's wrong to steal. You know, we can work that out ourselves. You have laws from the United Nations Human Rights Act, laws from the majority to protect the rights of the minority. You know? So, can I ask, have you been an atheist all your life or was you brought up religious? I was raised as a Catholic. It's very as a Catholic, and at which point did you decide that Catholicism is not the way forward? And what was it about you, about it that made you change your mind? Well, when I was younger, I started reading about different religions around the world. World religions, old religions, religions older than Catholics, Christianity, about beginning stories, you know, um, creation stories from around the world, and comparing them and seeing how millions of people believed in the, the old Greek myths, Millions of people believe in the Mayan myths. Millions of people believed in the Egyptian myths and stuff like that. And the Egyptian religion ran for about 5,000 years. Christianity has only been going for about 2,000 years. So who's to say that they were believing in the wrong thing? But when you look at the concept and why they, people developed that concept, you can understand where it came from. And right now, people have got so much information now about where we came from and the originals, the origins of the world and the universe and the galaxies that. The gods that we used to believe in are fading into non-existence. It's called the gods of the gaps. And the gaps are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, uh, I guess, how do you carry yourself? Like, what pra do, you, do you practice? Do you follow any practices? Any um, rituals? Like from African history, for instance? Or do you just live life as is? Well, we don't have no rituals or practices. We don't believe in any gods or kind of like laws. We make up our own laws based on consequential ethics. If you understand that if you was to hurt somebody, you know what that feeling feels like. It's mirror neurons. If say for instance I broke my arm, you'd instantly flinch because you know what it feels like to break your arm. So we know that you don't want to do that to someone else. And everyone wants to live in a world which is more peaceful for our children and for ourselves than a world that is more violent. So we worked out that the best way to, to create a peaceful world is to be a nice and peaceful person yourself. You don't need no God to tell you that. You know, and if someone says, if I haven't got Christianity or God to tell me that, what's going to stop me from going out killing and raping and killing and doing all the kind of things to people? They don't understand that if they're not doing it now, it's not because of the fear of a God or the rewards of going into heaven. It's because they're a good person. You know, if you were say, say for instance, someone like Hitler, who um, killed all the Jews, if he be on his deathbed converted to be a, a Christian, then Christians will say he'll be in heaven. Because all the Jews that he murdered are in hell because they didn't convert to Christianity. To me, that is immoral. It doesn't make no sense. And anybody who's beyond the age of five should be able to see that and work that out himself. But, for some people, it's difficult because the cultural ties that religion have, if you give it up, then you might be ostracized by your family. Like I said, in Muslim countries, you can be treated as an apostate and killed. You know? So if you're a Jehovah's Witness or Seventh-day Adventist, they would uh, you know, push you out of, this, out of the whole fold. You know? So at the bottom line of what you're saying is that as human beings, we should be able to make up our own minds, make our own decisions and follow our own rituals, practices that we want to follow and, and that's it. And come together. Yeah, come that's together, the point. Yeah. We right? should have faith in our own ability to do that. But 
Um, with Christians and Islam and Judaism and all these things, they come together as, um, with a like-mindedness, right? So if you take away all the confusions with um, punishment, like you said, if you find to not in some countries you're going to be punished for certain things, if you were to take that all away, would you agree with the um, way they live their life or the way they're supposed to live their life according to the Holy Book? The way I see it is that Muslims, Christians, they have a lot of a lot in a lot in common with us. Everybody, they want to see a good world. They want to see a peaceful life. Most of them, they want to see uh, the world get together as unity. Yeah. But the concept of having a heaven and a hell, and having a Muslims and non-believers, and the non-believers are called kufas, which is a derogatory term, you know, it's very divisive. Because if you're if you're a Muslim and you think that all Christians and Jews are gonna burn in hell, because they're not worshiping and respecting the God that created this whole world, then you think that they're being disrespectful to the God. You may try to convert them. If they don't want to convert, they, Muslims say they can live in a world where you got the jizra. They pay the, the tax, you know what I mean? And they get a certain time to convert. If they still don't convert, then obviously they can be um, killed as heretics. Or if you're a Muslim and you decide Islam's not for me, then you're called a, an apostate. And the punishment for apostasy is death. So this violence is not the way forward. You have to come together and realize you've got to have a system whereby you're not threatening to kill people. You're not giving them rewards in heaven. Or if you're like uh, some Muslim who think if you commit the ultimate act for your God and die a martyr, you get 72 virgins and rivers of wine. To me, that is just totally immoral. It's an immoral concept to have that. It, it hinders people coming together and uniting and finding a better way. Because there is a better way. As human beings, we can get together as human beings, as adults, and find a better way. United Nations came up with the Human Rights Act in the 1940s, which is much better than any laws in the Bible or the Quran. Now, because it treats people with respect. Whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're religious or non-religious, then people have the equal respect. Uh, but those, those rights can be abused, can they not? They can be abused. But there's laws. And there's, yeah. right, so you can, that's the same, it's the same system. Yeah. No, not everyone has signed up for the Human Rights Act, yeah? But if you had to say, for instance, a Muslim country where you've got Sharia law, whereby the punishment for stealing is to have your hand chopped off, that is an immoral, barbaric act. You could say that sending someone to prison is immoral. It's better to send someone to prison, yeah? Because you're removing them from society, so they're no longer dangerous to society. You've got them in an enclosed environment whereby no matter what the crime is, they can have a certain amount of time, depending on what crime it is, gives them time to reflect on what they've done. But we also have the state, the, the sorry, um, the punishment of death in the Western world as well. We so have, We don't have the death penalty in England. Yeah, we don't have it in England, but it's in the Western world. In some states in America, they don't have the death penalty. In some states, they do. In this country, we've progressed from that. We've learned that the death penalty is not a way forward, because you might kill someone, for a crime and find out later that a person was innocent. So that's an immoral, barbaric way of dealing with things. You put someone away, you lock them up, keep them in confinement, away from the rest of society so they're not a danger to anybody else. That's a much better system. Um, people have gone to prison and spent 20 plus years and been found to be innocent is still, it's still immoral. So my thing is, in anything that you do, there's going to be something that's immoral. There's going to be people that take advantage of it and things like that. So aside from that, in religion, what, what are you actually, what is your actual problem with, with religion? Aside from the fact, you want, do you want to go? Aside from that. Aside from that, my, my main problem with religion is that you've got religious, religious privilege in this country. If you've got a religious organization, they don't pay no tax. Yeah? Yet they have 26 bishops in the House of Lords making laws that we have to abide to. Yeah? You've got divisive faith schools, which have Muslim schools, you've got Christian schools. They're perpetuating that division and indoctrinating children that their religion is the true word of God, you know? And everyone else is going to burn in hell. You have religions that perform circumcision on children, saying that this circumcision is a covenant from God. God wants you to cut off the tips of the children's penises. Now, people say it's a medical reason for that, but we're not living in a desert 3,000 years ago. Everyone has a shower in their house now, you can take showers, so there's no medical reason for doing that. And in some sects in, uh, in New York, they have, actually have a Jewish sect, whereby the rabbis have the ancient practice of using their mouth 
to suck the blood out as they cut the penis off. To me, that is paedophilia. And the only reason why it's given a buy is because of religious exemption. And to me, that is so divisive, it's so immoral, it's so barbaric that this has to end. We have to come together and learn that this is not the way human beings should be living. In this day and age, 2015, we are smarter than that. To see more videos like this, subscribe to Titans TV down below. Thanks. The greatest darky that bite with shark teeth and hate malarkey. Who are you? The greatest heartbeat, ancient Egypt as a matriarchy. Who me? The one with the S on his chest when the motherfucker go by. Who are you? The one everybody calls your highness cause the weed got you feeling so high. Who me? My life is priceless, my life is righteous cause. Who are you? Aww, has once again made my life just like it was.